Joining me now on set is one of the lawmakers who was in the room during today's testimony, Pennsylvania Democratic Congresswoman Mary Gay Scanlon. Thank you so much, Congresswoman, for being here. Certainly. Now, you spent a number, a, a lot of your, a portion of your questioning today, making comparisons, as we just did, between former President Trump and President Biden. Why did you think that that was a good use of your time, given that this was, of course, Robert Herr? Well, because Mr. Herr made that comparison. In his report, he explained that there were significant, I believe he called it material differences between the situation with Mr. Trump and the situation with President Biden. As you said, um, there was cooperation. There was immediate turning over of um, documents when they were discovered. Uh, so, um, and there was certainly no attempt to hide documents, get other people to hide documents or lie about what happened. And of course, we've seen recent evidence, even more evidence coming out about that with respect to Mr. Trump. I want to ask you, obviously, Robert Hur did not investigate Trump, but a number of Democrats played video of former President Trump making um, gaffes, having memory lapses. What do you think the impact is that, uh, of that playing a video is going to have, especially when you think about voters and, and, and where we are right now in the election season? Well, I think we've all talked about the fact that there was undue attention paid to some of the gratuitous comments in Mr. Hur's report about... Um, President Biden not being able to remember um, a date or something, which actually we're seeing that some of those comments were overstated, given what we know about the transcript now. But the fact of the matter is that any time you bring in a witness or you have a trial and you ask people questions about something that happened years ago, they don't immediately recall what happened. And I thought it was important to highlight the fact that this is something that commonly happens and to stress that the difference between um, the decision to charge Mr. Biden was because Mr. Hirsch said he, he thought a jury would find Mr. Biden credible even with memory lapses and clearly the special counsel in Mr. Trump's case did not think he would be credible. Now, Mr. Hur, there have been a number of, of reporting that he is sort of a unifying figure in that Democrats have their issues with him and Republicans have their issues with him. Some, several of your Democratic colleagues accused Mr. Hur of being unfairly political. Do you agree with that assessment of him? I think he did a very um, comprehensive report and he tried to explain his reasons for it. I also would note that some of my Republican colleagues also accused him of being unfairly political. So... Um, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I think there was a little bit of something for everyone in that report. How, though, do you square both highlighting the fact that, that Robert Hur decided not to prosecute the president with also criticizing how he came to that conclusion? He's saying, I talked about his memory because I wanted to make sure it was clear why I didn't prosecute him. Why is that a problem? Um, how do you square that having a problem with that, with, with being happy in some ways about the actual conclusion he made? Well, the, the issues about, you know, what he had to say about memory seemed a bit cherry-picked. I mean, particularly the stress, and some of our colleagues um, repeated that today, stressing whether or not Biden could remember saying something that he said in 2017 to someone in the course of dozens of hours of conversation about something that wasn't particularly relevant to the conversation at the time. So um, there was some cherry-picking there, maybe, but... The overall point and the thing that we really tried to get out there was that the basic conclusion was there was nothing to charge here, that there was insufficient evidence, that there were in fact innocent explanations that would contradict that evidence. And that was the basis for the charging decision. There were multiple reasons for it, prime among them being the fact that there was not sufficient evidence. And you talk about the, the conclusions of this report and investigation. Some of your colleagues, they repeatedly called it an exoneration. Let's take a listen to some of that. In this case, did you reach a conclusion that this man was outright innocent? That conclusion is not reflected in my report, sir. Right. You did not reach an idea that he had committed no wrong. You reached a conclusion that you would not prevail at trial and therefore did not take it forward. Is that correct? Correct, Congressman. I need to um, go back and, and make sure that I take, take note of a word that you used, uh, exoneration. That Mr. is not Herr, a word that I'm going to continue with my questions. I'm going to continue with my questions. I know that, that I the term that I ultimately reached I know that whether the term, sufficient evidence existed such that the likely you outcome you, you exonerated would be a conviction. Him. I know that I the term will... Some feisty exchanges, but the word sure. exonerated in particular is what we want to focus on here. Do you think it's misleading to use the word exonerated here? I, 
I don't know if it's misleading here. Certainly there was an overall conclusion that there was insufficient evidence to bring charges here and that there were innocent explanations that might also be available. But what it kept bringing to mind for me was the Mueller report where that special counsel said if we could have exonerated the president, we would have, but we can't. So I think that's really more to the point of if we're going to talk about exoneration, it actually was used in that. Though today, Robert Hur he pushed back repeatedly on the use of the word exoneration. Mm -hmm. So I want to, what do you make of that idea that he wanted to be clear over and over again that exonerated was not the word that he was using? Well, I think that's consistent with being a prosecutor. You are, the prosecutor's job is whether or not they're going to bring charges. It's, the prosecutor's job is not to exonerate people, and they're not typically in the business of doing that. I also want to ask you about this issue of classified documents. Um, there was a point where we looked up and it was like everybody, almost every leader was looking in their house seeing, oh, do I have classified documents? Mm -hmm. Pence, Vice, former Vice President Mike Pence, ever, all these different people were kind of sure. putting their hands up to say, oh, I might have something. Do you want to see more security on the way that classified documents are being held? And if so, what would that look like? What do you want to see happen when it comes to classified documents? Sure. I think it's a two-pronged issue. One is we've got this drumbeat of folks who say we over classify things. There's a lot of things that are marked classified which really don't need to be classified. So with overclassification, it, it increases the possibility that um, documents are going to be out there that it's perfectly okay. Um, yes, we probably should have better tracking of these documents and, and we need to work on that. But I do think it's really important to think about the fact that most of the documents we were talking about here were um, President Biden's personal notes. And that's a very different situation than, say, um, storing nuclear secrets and assessments of other um, foreign leaders in your bathroom. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, as, we, as we pointed out, Robert Hurd did say that there are differences here. I want to ask you a question about a completely different topic, which okay. is um, Hakeem Jeffries, of course, the, the leader of the Democrats in the House. He's urging Democrats to sign a discharge petition mm -hmm. to force a vote on the Senate passed foreign aid bill. Mm -hmm. Would you, did you support that? Would you support that? I've already signed the discharge petition. That, that um, bill passed the Senate over over a month, almost two months ago now. Um, our allies are in desperate need of aid. We need to get um, humanitarian relief to Palestine. There are border security issues in there. So yes, I think it's an important national security bill that Speaker Johnson should put on the floor today. Well, thank you so much, Congresswoman, for joining thank us. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.